Welcome to Chalk Talk, Danville Public Schools Weekly News Magazine. I'm Diane Locker, your host. We're going to be at Galileo Magnet High School this week, and we're here because we want to celebrate some successes that they've had. And we're talking about their Scholastic Bowl team. And I have Jared Smith here, who is a teacher here. But Jared, are you also considered the advisor for the team? Uh, coach, if you will. A so, coach, yes. okay. Now, Scholastic Bowl, mm -hmm. that's an academic uh, it's an competition. Ac yeah. competition. Yes, yes. Uh, it's an academic competition in which questions range from anything uh, one might learn in four years of high school, including core subjects like uh, history, mathematics, science, English, but also uh, encompass a wide variety of things such as popular culture, sports and athletics, uh, music, art, uh, those sort of things. Now, how long have, have we had this team here at Galileo? Well, it's been about six years. Um, around uh, the fall of 2010, um, the team uh, had its inaugural season. And uh, we've always been a competitive bunch, but uh, this has been our, our, our best season in school history. Now, I think the reason you're saying that is I think for the first time in that six years, you actually won a competition and were qualified to go to state competition, correct? That's right. We did finish uh, first in our region this year uh, and were the Region 1A champions and advanced to the state tournament at the College of William and Mary. And that, now, what happened there? Well, we ran into some stiff competition. We, we won our first match against uh, Galax from the 1A West region. And uh, we, uh, there were two rounds that decided the outcome of the tournament. We, we placed fourth in the state uh, out, of, uh, out of the uh, schools competing for the 1A uh, state championship. That sounds like a winner to me, placing fourth in the state. Yes. Uh, it was a very, very great season. Uh, it wasn't the way possibly we all anticipated the season turning out, but that's life. Uh, and so, uh, you know, we've got nowhere to go but uh, back to the state tournament and win this thing and, and next year. But, uh, you know, my seniors that uh, were on the team this year, they, uh, a lot of them have been building for four years for this. And I'm glad that they finally got to see sort of the, uh, the fruits of their labor uh, sort of uh, uh, take note for all their accomplishments here. And, um, you know, very proud of them. Now, I think we need to go back to the issue of competition sure. here and talk about it. Now, is this sort of like, um, could we compare it to Jeopardy? Uh, it is similar to Jeopardy in a sense. Um, there are two, um, there are three rounds in a Scholastic Bowl match. Um, the first and third round of the match are toss-up rounds in which there are 15 toss-up questions that players, or, or contestants rather, uh, must buzz in to answer, similar to what you see on, on, on a game show such as Jeopardy. Uh, the, the middle round of a Scholastic Bowl match is a team round in which questions are directed, usually 10 in number, um, to each team and the uh, contestants may confer with one another and relay a, a, an answer to a captain to provide orally to what's called the quiz master, which is essentially the reader of the questions. Now, you said a little bit earlier that they, the questions might rule, um, deal with anything at the high school level, all of that. And that makes it sound like a question is asked of someone and then they answer it. But there's a, a caveat here when we're talking about the way that these kids have to, um, have to compete. There's a timer. There's a buzzer. I mean, right. it's like you've got to beat the other guy on the other team. Yes. Come up with the answer faster. That's a little bit different to me then you can give me a question, give me time to think, but the minute I know a buzzer is going to go off, it just rattles me. Right. It's very competitive, especially the toss-ups, because, uh, you, you know, the, the, the contestants can't interrupt the questioner and provide an answer based on a clue if they know the correct answer. Um, and so the, the objective is to be as quick and accurate uh, when answering the questions. Um, all of my, my seniors here have, like, an individual niche in which they are um, – sort of uh, more than proficient in, such as, you know, some people are better in American history, some people are English literature, uh, some people are more uh, aware of current events, some are more science-driven, mathematically driven, and so forth. Well, so I think what we're going to do probably in the second half of the show, I'm going to be talking to the, each of these students that has their own area, area, like maybe somebody's art, maybe somebody's history, right. maybe somebody's math, maybe somebody's science. Now, how, how do you, you're the coach, mm -hmm. Is this a class that you teach, or is this something they do after class? How, how is it structured? How do you practice? Um, we, we normally practice biweekly, at least twice a week. Um, but um, in terms of what I prepare them with, we, uh, um, you know, occasionally I may give them some handouts to, to look over, but m 
more often than not, it's just what they learn in school. So I often tell people it's, it's, the, it's the school that needs to take credit for this, the faculty. It's, you know, I only teach history classes here. But, um, you know, the, the school itself does a great job preparing these students for, uh, for the competition. Uh, moreover, um, all these, you know, students behind me are, are just naturally curious about a variety of things. So they enjoy learning themselves. And this, this sort of curiosity has uh, promoted a drive for them to, to go out and learn things independently of what they would learn inside a classroom. So a lot of it is on them, a lot of it's on the school, and, and you know, I play a very insignificant portion in why they do well, you know. But, but I, th uh, I, th I think also it would, take, it would take a special kind of student. And I'm sure you have some very bright, bright students that are not part of this scholastic bowl, but it takes a different personality. It takes someone that can do that in front of other people. Yeah. It does, and, and like with you know, anything in life, be it a, you know, a job or sports or whatnot, there's a variety of egos involved, including my own. And uh, you know, sometimes you know, we, we, we may argue back and forth, but naturally speaking, you know, these, you know, most of the kids enjoy competing and, and kind of showing off what they know and they, they thrive on it. Um, I've never seen uh, this bunch behind me be nervous towards a, a competition, and that's, that's some, you know, it's something that's uh, been very different from other teams I've had in, in the past at Galileo. I don't think you, I, I think if you, uh, there, it takes a certain amount of nervousness mm -hmm. to do it, mm -hmm. but I think not being, being very nervous would hamper you mm -hmm. in competition mm -hmm. because of ringing that bell right, and right. coming up with the answer. Well, I mean, the, the team itself is very aggressive and they're very confident in, the, in their ability to, to you know, uh, be quick on the buzzer but also accurate in their responses. So, you know, <clears throat> you know sometimes, of course, you know, we are penalized for, for incorrect answers, but more often than not, we are very, very proficient in the way in which we play. Um, and um, if, if somebody were to buzz in and uh, there's a penalty assessed, uh, these, these students have a, a high level of, of resolve around them to where they're not r very easily rattled. How so. do you choose these students? Do, is it, are these the only ones that you have? Did, did other people want to be part of it? How, how do you go about choosing? Like in any sports team, right. you've got to choose someone. What's, what's, the, what's the criteria here? Well, I just ask that if you join, uh, every beginning of every school year we have an interest meeting about Scholastic Bowl. And I just ask if you join, you're committed. And um, during the regular season, the team is significantly larger. We have we have about maybe 18 on the on the regular team. But uh, once the um, the postseason starts, I'm only going to be carrying to events what I consider to be the strongest of 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 those 18. Um, and um, you know, this year was a, a year in which we had um, seniors. Some of them have been on this team for four years. Others three um, that have really grown accustomed to leading the team and um, it's the it's the most experienced and veteran of um, in terms of veterans I've ever had on the team so you're gonna lose all the students that I'm gonna be talking to you're gonna lose them this year they're graduating right yes um, uh, a year from now I've, I've got a incredible bunch of juniors and two sophomores that are going to be um, very very good uh, next year so I expect uh, Galileo to be competing again for a berth in state tournament. Not to sound arrogant or overconfident, but I'm, I'm being, you know, dead serious when I say that. So. Arrogant and overconfident kind of does it in a situation like so, this. So, so. <laughs> That's what you got to be to do these kind, kind of things. What I want to do now is I'm going to take a short break, and when we come back from the break, I'm going to talk individually to each of the students that are behind us because those are the people that kind of led you to mm -hmm. the uh, competition and the winnings that you've had this year. Mm -hmm. Be sure to come back after the break and you're going to meet the students that actually competed in the contest and how they feel about it. Hello everyone, my name is Alexandra Reddy and I'm the Beta Club President here at Galileo Magnet High School. Let me tell you about Beta Club. Beta Club is a national academic club that focuses on community service and in fact our motto is let us lead by serving others. So every month, the Beta Club here at Galileo completes a service project for our community and also for our school. And then in February, we travel to the state convention where we compete with other schools in the areas of English, science, social studies, talent competitions, and it's a really awesome experience. But I also have the honor of being the Virginia State Beta Club president, an election that I won back in February at the convention. So this means that I have to travel to at least two other state conventions this year. There's North Carolina, South Carolina, 
all across the country that I am able to travel to. So I'm very blessed to be the state president and I'm excited for what the year holds and making Galileo proud and making Virginia Beta proud. Hello, my name is J.D. Edmonds, and this is my wife. Janine Edmonds. I am the Bond and Booster President, and I'm encouraging all you parents to get involved with your child's education, get involved with the community, and show your support for your kid's school. Continue to be that bridge between the community, school, and family. Welcome back. If you're just joining us, in the first half of the show, you met Jared Smith, who is a teacher here at Galileo and also the coach for their Scholastic Bowl team. What we're going to do in the second half of the show is meet the students that actually carried this team forward this year. And I'm going to start off with Will. And Will is, now Will, you are, quotes, the expert <laughs> in politics and current events. Yes, ma'am. Now, give me an example of a question that they might have brought up about either of those things. Okay, so for example, um, at the state match, they brought up a question about Ted Cruz. Ah. Um, uh, he, they mentioned something about how he uh, uh, did a gun control case. He, he argued that successfully against the gun control uh, argument. And then uh, a, they mentioned something about a commercial he did where he um, uh, wrapped a piece of bacon around a machine gun and then fired it and then fried the bacon. It's, it's crazy, but that was something they, they brought up. But that, that's not something that, that you were probably taught in school. So it's not only the, the background of your knowledge of things that you've learned in class, you're also keeping up with what's going on currently. Is that a correct statement? I would say so, yes, largely. Um, I, if they'd continued the question, I'm sure that they would have mentioned about how he was, you know, running for, as a contender for the Republican nomination. Uh, however, um, I got the question before they mentioned that. Now, tell me what it feels like. To me, it just seems like, you know, I can get on my iPad, and when I'm playing a game and the little bombs come up, they're going to go off in two or three seconds. That rattles me. What's it like sitting there and they're throwing questions at you and you having to answer so fast? Well, it, it's a skill. You know, you don't want to buzz in and get it wrong because then they deduct points. But if you wait too long, then the other team may get it. So it, it's really a learned skill and I'm not really sure I can explain it. Have you ever hit the buzzer and thinking you had the answer and you really didn't just kind of automatically hit it? I mean, I thought, I thought I had the answer, and yeah, I buzzed in plenty of times, and then, you know, points were deducted. It happens. It happens to everybody. Points are deducted for your overall score for the whole team? Yes, ma'am. You're a senior this year? Yes, ma'am. What happens next year? Uh, well, next year, uh, I'm, I'm going to college. I'm working on, working on where, but I'm going to go to college, and hopefully I'll continue, uh, you know, this academic quiz bowl uh, with a, you know, college team. So... What is it that you want to go to college for, or have you decided? Um, I hope to go to, uh, go to school for biology or ecology. Um, it's a field that really, really interests me and um, is more relevant every, every day. Isn't that the truth? Thanks for talking to me. Thank you, ma'am. For the category of history and drama, we've got Abby with us, and Abby's a senior here at Galileo. Mm -hmm. Abby, uh, history and drama, why... To me, I don't think those two go together. Are they really two separate categories that, that you're like the expert in? Um, I sort of, it feels like it depends because sometimes they go hand in hand because certain shows you have to do research about historical events and things like that. Like for instance, there's a show called 1776 and it's about the signing of the Declaration of Independence. And I'm really interested in uh, you know theater and history. So that sort of goes together and it helps me learn even better actually. Now how, how and why did you get involved in Scholastic Bowl here at Galileo? Um, when I was a freshman, um, Mr. Smith asked me to um, join this club. And my first year, my first freshman and sophomore years, I wasn't, ex I wasn't entirely involved all the time. But last year, I started coming even more. And now I'm completely involved, and he plays me a lot more. So, 
Well, I talked with Mr. Smith about mm -hmm. how you get ready for competition. Right. Tell me how you prepare for competition. Is, who, is somebody asking a question, hitting the buzzer? How do you get ready for competition? Because if you don't have that knowledge, right. that's not something you can get ready with, is it? Right. Um, sometimes when we are in practices, we sort of run practice matches, like we're against each other. So it sort of helps both of us, like, I mean, all of us, you know, practice against each other and we're like trying to get buzzers faster and things like that. And we usually, and then sometimes we'll just practice toss up rounds and then sometimes we'll just practice directed rounds. It sort of just depends, you know, on the day or something like that. If you had to pick one thing that you've gotten from being part of this Scholastic Bowl team, what would that be? Um, I think um, something about teamwork because you have to really work as a team, particularly in the directed rounds. And that's something that I really strive to do, to be a great team player. And things. When you say a team player, though, each one of you, every, everyone that I'm talking to today has their own little area. Right. When they are asking the questions, do they prompt the question by saying, we're going to be dealing with history now and ask the question? Mm -hmm. Or do they just put these questions out there and you've got to decide what category, or you just come up with the answer? It doesn't make any difference right. if you answer a math, or does the math person, how does that go? In, uh, yeah, it really doesn't make a difference, particularly in the toss-up rounds. Like, for instance, say if someone who... Go back. What's a toss-up round? Toss-up round is where they um, direct a question just at anyone, and you have to buzz in, and you have to um, give an answer, you know, based on the clues that they give so, you. So that, in a toss-up round, that question, that, those questions may deal with any of the areas. Right. Okay. Now, the areas that, that I'm talking with all of you today, are those the only areas that they're having competition um, in? Not necessarily. They can have a lot, a range of things. I know, for instance, um, they sometimes talk about pop culture and sports. And while we have people that some know some of those things, we're not entirely like we know all about sports or things like that. You know, but mostly we know they ask questions about, of course, you know, history, current events, um, classic literature, things like that. So we're usually pretty well, you know. Now you've been at Galileo for four years. Yes, ma'am. You're going to graduate, yes. and what happens after graduation? Um, I um, have gotten into two colleges, and I'm still awaiting acceptance from William and Mary. And then after that. I don't know, I'll go to college and I plan to um, major in education and become a teacher one day. Cool. Mm -hmm. You can come back here. We'll hire you in a skinny <laughs> minute. <laughs> Thanks for talking to me. Thank you. <laughs> Caleb here is kind of the expert in an area that I would absolutely die in. That's mathematics and science. Now, Caleb, mathematics and science, they're, they're related more than maybe the history and drama that, that I just talked with um, one of the students about. Tell me the type of questions you get. Okay, so I enjoy uh, most subjects. Uh, I, I try to get every question that I can, and uh, sometimes I get questions that are outside of mathematics and science, but um, the, sometimes they have questions directly related to mathematics. Sometimes during the – so Abby, I know Abby mentioned the toss-up rounds. Yeah, There's she – also a directed round. And the directed round is um, set up so that the teams can confer with each other. So each question is directed to one particular team, and then they have a certain amount of time to confer with their teammates to come up with an answer together. Now, in the directed round, occasionally there will be uh, what are called computation questions. And th during these questions, students use pencil and paper to uh, work out mathematic, mathematical problems. I, I, I think I have it, I've confused myself. You've got the toss-up mm -hmm. round where they throw out the mm -hmm. questions, and you've got the directed rounds where apparently you can work as a team to answer. Is there ever a time when they have, like, just math questions or just history questions or anything like that? Are, they, are those all mixed together all the time? All of the questions, all the different subjects are mixed together. So the, there might be a science question, then maybe a literature question, then maybe a current events question. And occasionally they do, although have perhaps two literature questions in a row or you know three history questions in a row. It really just depends on how the the test or the question 
the, how the question writers organized the the uh, the clues and then the uh, the subjects. Now, obviously, if you're going to be going there as kind of like our mathematics expert, you don't learn that at the last minute. You had to know that when you when you went in there. How many seconds? I keep hearing about these bu- buzzers. Mm-hmm. If I were to ask the questions, how many seconds goes by? Are there is there ever a, a buzzer goes off that no one can answer? How long do they give you? Right. So on the toss-up rounds, which is where you get to buzz in, uh, after the question is finished being read, then if nobody gets it within 10 seconds, then they move on. Uh, to another question? To another question, right. And once you do buzz in, if you perhaps stutter or if you pause, you get three seconds before you have to at least start your answer and if you don't, then they'll call time, and you won't be able to have a chance to get an answer. So you have three seconds there. Now, on the mathematics questions during the directed round, they'll give you a little bit more time depending on how difficult the question is. So they separate them into 20-second calculation questions and then 30-second calculation questions. And so obviously the... Do they have any three-hour ones? I could do that. <laughs> right, yes, it does get difficult. The time limit is, even with 30 seconds, it, it often is very difficult to work out a problem that quickly. You were talking about one thing there I would think would be a spinoff from doing this. But you said you, you hit the buzzer. And you have three seconds if you stutter or something. It probably, doesn't it also end up helping you with sort of like public speaking or speaking before a group if you've got to come up with it that quick? Right, definitely, because a lot of times you'll feel, I guess, as the, um, especially on the toss-up, when they start really generally and they become more specific, you have to kind of search your brain for the right thing to say. And uh, sometimes even the, the, you have to word your answer in a specific manner in order to get it correctly. And so definitely you, you have, you're under a lot of pressure, of course, because there's the time and then you know, everybody else is watching. So it, it definitely helps with being able to think quickly on the spot under pressure and then coming up with a clear, correct answer. I was going to say, the thinking part, all of that, but then you've still got to be able to, to say it. Mm-hmm. To, to get it out there. Now, you're a senior this year. Have you been at, at Galileo for four years? Uh, three years. Three years. And, okay, what happens now when you graduate, after graduation? So I'm interested in math and computer science, so I hope to go to, I'll be going to Cornell University to study both of those subjects. And um, hopefully afterwards I'm interested in pursuing a career in research, uh, possibly in computer science, and, and I look forward to that a lot. Research of Researching what? Well, what I'm interested in specifically is known as theoretical computer science. It's I'm so uh, glad I ask. It, it, it's <laughs> kind of like the philosophy of computers. So uh, you, uh, it's um, it's heavily connected with mathematics, mm-hmm. and so I'm looking forward to being able to uh, spend my time learning, learning about new ideas, and then uh, applying my own knowledge to difficult problems. Super. Sounds good to me. Thanks for talking to me. Thank you. <laughs> American History and Art, it's covered by Lars. Now, Lars Sr.? Yep. Okay. And I, I've already talked with one of the um, students that does history. So you've got a category of American history and a category of history? Um, well, it's kind of a mix of history. Um, both Abby and I are very good at American history, and we also know a lot of world history. Um, so there, it, it depends on, I guess it depends on the rounds. Some rounds there'll be a lot of American history questions. Some rounds there'll be a lot of world history or ancient history questions. Um, they don't delineate them. You just have, she she's probably has a little bit of expert in some yeah. other area, and you concentrate just yeah. in American history. Yeah. But they don't divide it up that way in the competition. No. They just throw the questions out there. Yeah, the competition, um, when they write the questions, they don't, tell you at the beginning well, this is going to be an American history question, this is going to be a math question. Um, it's all, I think the basis of academic competition is that you should have a pretty general knowledge of kind of everything in academics. Um, but it seems, so Abby's had a, a world history class, which I've never taken, so um, that's probably why Abby gets a little more of those questions, but I've taken more American history classes, so that's why I guess I'm better at that subject. What has been, 
I won't say your most embarrassing moment in, in competition, but let's say what is something that you've done? Maybe hit that bell and didn't know the answer or hit that bell and then couldn't give the answer. Has any of that ever happened to you in competition? <laughs> that has a couple of times. Um, sometimes I'll, I'll be thinking as the question's being read, like, oh, I, I should know this one. I've, I remember uh, learning it sometime and then I'll answer and then I'll get it wrong or sometimes I won't answer and the other person on the other team will answer and I'll be like, oh, I completely knew that. So that happens a couple of times, but I guess it's just part of the competition. But I, I would think that you could know an awful lot, but it's getting it out there quick. And it's also knowing that there's another team there that can hit that buzzer quicker than you can hit that buzzer. I mean, it's just the, it's yeah. the speed. It's not yeah. so much the knowledge. Even if you got it wrong, it's not that you didn't know it. Right. it it's just the whole, the way it works. Right. Tell me one thing, I've asked this before, that probably would be the most important thing you've gotten out of participating in this. Um, I think, honestly, just enjoyment. I've had a lot of fun doing it. Um, I, I recently moved here, so I haven't, and at my old school we had an academic team, but I wasn't really interested in it. Um, but when I moved here, I kind of thought about it more, um, and I really had fun um, playing on the team um, and traveling with the team and doing things like that. And it's also fun to, um, to finally be able to kind of use all of these facts I have in my head for something um, that's also been fun. So I think that most of it's just, it's been an enjoyable experience for me. Yeah, it's a very interesting way you put that. It's, it's finally getting to use all that <laughs> stuff that's, that's put in. And a lot of times you go to school and you go to school for years and you wonder right. why are they telling me this stuff? Yeah. So now you know. <laughs> yep, now you can compete with it. Now, you're a senior. What happens next? Um, I'm still deciding that. Um, I've applied to a couple of colleges. Um, I'm interested in studying naval engineering or aerospace engineering. Um, so I'm kind of just looking at schools that are best for that subject, but I'll kind of decide as I hear back from them. Now, naval engineering or what, if in a career, what, what type of job would you be looking for if you had a degree in one of those? Um, so there's lots of different things I've thought about. One thing I've thought about is I know the Navy hires lots of engineers um, as private contractors to help them build new ships and planes and things like that. So I've thought about doing that, or I've thought about even going into private shipbuilding because I, I have a really big interest in sailing and things like that. So That's cool. That's cool. Thanks for talking to uh -huh. me. Thank you. Congratulations. Thanks. Melissa is our expert in literature and biology. Melissa, they seemed like two very different subjects. The others have kind of hung together somehow, but biology and literature. Um, well, I really like to read, and I've always really enjoyed reading books, and I read them over and over again, and I guess biology is kind of my favorite class here. So, How long have you been on the uh, Scholastic Bowl team? Well, I've been on the ACE team here since my 10th grade year when I switched schools, but at my old school, uh, I was on the ACE team in middle school and then at my old high school for one year, so. All right. How do you feel about the competition? We've talked a lot during the show about the competition, the way the questions are thrown out and you come up with the answers, hit the buzzer and all of that stuff. How, does, how do you, that would make me nervous. How do you feel about it? Um, well, it's kind of nerve wracking, like the first um, match of the night, because uh, I don't know. I feel like the first match, whether you win or lose, kind of determines how you're going to feel about the rest of them for the rest of the night. So, like, if you lose, like, you got that low confidence and you don't really feel like you can do well. But if you, like, start out winning, then you feel really great. And yeah. What is it? A winner always wins? I guess. That type of thing. We've talked a lot about competition mm -hmm. and how the competition goes. Who are the people that are asking you the questions? Uh, it's uh, like we have a quiz master. But who are they? I mean, I mean, other than being a quiz master, are they uh, teachers, yeah, professors, that type of thing? They're teachers at, like, the host schools. But at States, we had, like, a special people that did it. Like, they were actual, um, like, people that did that for a thing. Like, they were experts in history and math and the, et cetera. So. What has been the most important reason for you to be in Scholastic Bowl? What have you gotten out of it? What do you think has done for you? Um, uh, I don't know. I guess I just really enjoy spitting out knowledge. That's basically it. If you got it, spitting it out is a good way to use it. Now, you're a senior this year? Yeah. What happens next year? I'm going to go to college somewhere, I suppose. And what do you want to do? Uh, geology. Now, if I wanted to do geology, what would I be doing? I'm not entirely sure. I could work for, like, the NSA mm -hmm. or the CIA, 
or other government institutions, I suppose. Sounds like a cool job to me. What I, we're going to do now is we're going to close the show, and you're going to help me do that. I want to thank everybody for being with us this week. We are very proud here in Danville Public Schools of this Scholastic Bowl team. They've had a wonderful year, and the, all of these students that I've been talking to are the reason that they've had a wonderful year. Be sure to come back next week and hear more about what's going on in Danville Public Schools.